Hey, I'm Daniel from Tumult. In this video, we're going to talk about symbols. We're going to do a deep dive into how to use them, how to create them, how to convert a persistent symbol to a standard symbol, and a bunch of different techniques that, even if you've worked with Hype for years, you might not be familiar with some of these ways to make working in Hype a little easier with reusable content. And that's what symbols are all about. It's uh, if you have multiple elements that you want to be linked across your entire document, a symbol is a great way to link up those elements so that modifying a single version of that symbol will affect everything in your document that is that same symbol instance. So let's get started. So we're gonna get started with this really simple animation. It's got a uh, plane and we've got the landing gear going up on a additional timeline and we want to make a fleet of these planes that's sort of our problem and we want to make sure that one edit to one of the planes uh, affects all the other planes because we don't want to have to recreate any work so this is just a really initial uh, demonstration of how symbols are typically used going to make a new symbol from selection and that gives us a symbol in our timeline and a symbol uh, here in our resource library. So I can copy and paste this on my scene and now I have two linked planes where an edit to one plane affects the other plane. So that's really the key use case where you have a animation or set of elements or both that you want to remain linked on your scene. Um, this is a concept that uh, many different creative tools use, so we hope it sort of uh, falls in line with what you understand a symbol to be. Uh, I can control these individual symbols separately when I preview in a browser, and you'll notice that when I have my resource here called symbol, I can rename it here and this updates both instances. So this is all linked. Um, everything updates together. Once you're in a symbol, you can uh, enter by double clicking on it. You get this purple bar above. You can further sort of zero in on what you're editing by clicking this button here in the timeline area. And what this does is just remove any elements that's not inside of that symbol. And it'll hide other symbol instances. So also to exit, you would click this exit symbol. In our new symbol, we have the additional timeline that was pulled in. So this is like a scene within a scene. Also, when you make a symbol, we create a symbol action here, which automatically starts the main timeline of that symbol. So if we had the plane moving on the main timeline, that would start the second that the symbol appears on a scene. Another key thing to understand with symbols is you can duplicate them. So you can start a new reference point for an additional symbol. So let's say I wanted a symbol plane without landing gear. I would duplicate it by clicking that duplicate symbol button and then I can have a separate instance. So now when I go in here to edit this I can delete elements and you see it, it's not linked to that earlier symbol. And I can just like the other symbol duplicate that symbol as much as I want. So that's the key workflow of creating a symbol and how they are linked. Uh, now I want to switch over to some concepts regarding positioning. If you've worked with groups, uh, you understand that a group creates sort of a top level element. So if I select these three rectangles and click group, I have a group element here which is separate from these three rectangles. So I can set a mouse click action on this group and that does not affect uh, this lower level element. That same concept applies to symbols. 
So I can set a mouse click action on this top level symbol element. Uh, let's say I want that to jump to scene, next scene. If I were to duplicate this, that mouse click action would be copied. But if I change this, let's say I don't want this plane to be clickable, it would not affect this other symbol instance. So just like groups, you have this sort of purple boundary that you're working with, which is separate from the inner properties once you're within a symbol. So along those lines, you just like a group can resize elements. So if I were inside of the symbol and I want to make everything a little smaller and I want that to affect every single symbol that uh, this plane is a part of, I would just click and drag with everything selected. And this is actually resizing the width and height of those elements. If I wanted a symbol to be smaller, but not have it affect other instances, I would want to resize with scaling uh, just a single instance. And this affects the outer boundary of what hype knows about your symbol, but doesn't affect the inner contents. So now I'm going to show you the wrong way, and then I'll show you the right way. If you were to click and drag on this symbol, this just changes the boundaries of this specific symbol. So I don't want that. What I want to do is adjust the scale. And a quick way to do that is hold Command and then click and drag. So now we still have two linked symbols, and one is smaller and one is larger. This can be super useful if you're working with uh, responsive layouts where you have a smaller iPhone layout, where you want your, your smaller symbol to be, but you have a larger desktop layout, and uh, you make an edit on this larger layout, and that doesn't affect your iPhone layout. I want to talk briefly about actions within and outside of symbols. When you're in the symbol and you have a action where you want to start a timeline within that symbol, that's pretty straightforward. You're already in the symbol, and your symbol already knows that you have a gear away timeline. And clicking that button, um, you can have easily start or stop or control that timeline. But if you wanted this button to be outside of the symbol, you would need to use a feature called custom behaviors. I'm going to dive into that concept in a different video, um, but the key thing to know is that you create custom behaviors within symbols or outside of them, and then that gives you access to that custom behavior anywhere in your document. To watch this video, click the link that pops up here or in the description below, and we'll cover custom behaviors uh, in full. Now I'd like to talk about persistent symbols. So to do that, I'm going to open a different demo document, which you can download in the description of this video below. I'm going to show you sort of the use case for symbols and then go into how you create them and uh, how to work with them. So in this document, there are only three top level elements. We have an image, and then we have navigation, which uh, moves through different slides. And then we have a symbol with the uh, logo here. So these two symbols are persistent symbols. And what they do is they persist across scenes. This, uh, this logo here, its position is unique per scene, but it exists on every scene. So just like uh, we discussed in the regular symbols, your sort of outer knowledge of a symbol, considering its position and its boundaries, that's not stored in the symbol. But its inner contents are shared between all symbols. So what this means is that when we preview, during scene transitions, 
these two symbols, persistent symbols, uh, are not affected by scene transitions. So we can move between different scenes using this persistent symbol and the animation for the white box is part of the persistent symbols timeline and it retains its state across scene transitions. This is useful for headers and footers and animations where you want state to be retained across different scenes. So I'm going to jump into this persistent symbol and show you how it behaves. So you'll notice back on the scene we don't have a symbol action that starts the main timeline. And you'll see why in a moment. When you click this initial play button, that is what continues the main timeline, but it also jumps to the next scene. So what this does is it begins this uh, main timeline on that persistent symbol and every time it hits this timeline action it pauses and then you can advance it again so you can continue forward and this continues to the end and then this final one um, hides the backwards arrow so you can see here with just an opacity animation and then gets it to the end you'll see that we also have a can restart timeline button here and what this means is that once the end of this timeline is hit it can go right back to the beginning and we can start from uh, the beginning so in this section I'm going to talk about creating persistent symbols and how they behave once you have them on every scene so as you remember in that earlier demo this logo we want to show up in the top left corner and not be affected by scene transitions. So to do that I have my single image selected. I'm going to click Symbols and then New Persistent Symbol from Selection. And what this asks me is whether I want to add it to every single scene or just the current scene. So I've added to every single scene and now you can see in the thumbnails it appears everywhere. In New Scenes it will automatically be added as well as the other navigation symbol, uh, persistent symbol that is. And you can modify that behavior by entering the symbol and then going to the symbol menu and then checking or unchecking this checkbox. This option gives you the option of having your symbol default to being uh, on top on the layer order. So if this were below here um, and we were transitioning, it would pop up at the beginning. So if I were to turn that display on top off, then during the scene transition that I'm about to trigger, it wouldn't show up on top, only in that next scene where it appears. We think the default is a good default. Okay. So one thing that um, you might realize when working with persistent symbols is that the positioning is not shared. Just like regular symbols, it's not shared across scenes. So if I changed my mind and wanted this in the top right corner, this would not have any effect on my other scenes. So I go to this next scene and that just doesn't apply. So you would need to sort of re-go through that process of adding that persistent symbol to every scene. Quick way to do that is to convert this to standard and then duplicate it. So now we can call this symbol right side and then in this symbol right side, I'm going to go ahead and delete this one. In symbol right side, you would then convert that to a persistent symbol. But first I want to delete my old symbol right here. Just click remove. So now I have uh, no symbol on my scenes and just a regular symbol on the right side. So now since I want this shared across all my scenes, I would go in and click per persistent 
and then this gives you an option to add it to every single scene. So this will sort of uh, give us that new alignment and just spread it across my document automatically. So that's a basic rundown of symbols and persistent symbols. If you have any questions about symbols and how to use them, please join us on our forums and let us know your questions. Thanks.